Okay, so this is the grand finale, the extension question, the hardest question in the resource. So, you know, you're going to need to apply your understanding of mechanistic organic chemistry quite a lot in this question, okay? But if you use the simple principles of electronegativities and bond polarities and your knowledge of curly arrows, then you should be able to have a really good go at this question. So this focuses on uh, ethylene oxide, which is an epoxide, and uh, the reaction of it with uh, sodium methoxide and methanol, okay? So, yeah, the reaction scheme below shows how ethylene oxide can react with the nucleophilic species under basic conditions to form an alcohol, okay? So, first question is to define the term nucleophile, and you get a mark for that. So, what is a nucleophile? Well, it's quite simple. A nucleophile is an electron pair donor. That's all you need to write to get that one mark. So, any words to that effect, so donates a pair of electrons, uh, is attracted to an electron deficient center, anything kind of along those lines will get you the marks for this question. So that's what a nucleophile is and that's worth one mark. So the tricky bit is from here on in. So draw the structure of compound H, the product of the reaction. Okay, so you can see here in step two this mechanism occurring. So you can see that this oxygen uh, atom, so sorry, I should say ion, it's got a negative charge on it, is this curly arrow showing the movement of electrons to form a bond to this hydrogen atom, and then this pair of electrons um, from the hydrogen oxygen bond, so the bond breaks, and this pair of electrons is going to the OCH3 group. So you can see that being formed here, so now it's a negatively charged group because the pair of electrons have moved onto there. So what we're seeing here, the product of this reaction, if you excuse my bad drawing, is OH there. So the oxygen has scrapped the hydrogen atom and you've formed an alcohol in the end. Okay, so there you go, that's compound H, and if you get that completely correct, then you'll get one mark. So now for the trickiest part of this question, you need to draw a mechanism to show how step one of the reaction proceeds. And you need to use the methoxide ion, uh, that's what that OCH3- group is called, as the nucleophile and include your relevant dipoles. Okay, and this is for three marks. So you're looking for three key things in particular. So let's draw this out. So, again, my drawing is bad, I apologise. I'm not an artist, I'm a chemist. Shame, really. But anyway, so there is your ethylene oxide. And here is your nucleophile. So it's an electron pair donor. So this, okay, let's now think about our dipoles. Because as I said earlier, remember, if we look at the dipoles, even if we're not asked to include dipoles, it's good to draw them in to see where this molecule might react, okay? So in this ethylene oxide molecule, you'll see that there is an electronegative atom in the form of oxygen, so that's likely going to have a delta minus charge, and then these two carbon atoms will have a delta positive charge. So remember, this is a symmetrical molecule, okay? So you're going to have a delta positive on both sides. So from here, you would expect the negatively charged um, nucleophile, you'd expect this lone pair of electrons to be attracted to an electron deficient center, and indeed they are. So it attacks the carbon atom. It doesn't matter which carbon atom it attacks because this is a symmetrical molecule. You're going to form the same product either way. And then in forming this bond, you can't have a pentavalent carbon, so that means a carbon with five bonds. So what's going to happen is you're going to have this carbon-oxygen bond break, and the electron pair in the bond is going to move on to the oxygen atom. So what you'll form here is CH2. CH3, like that. So, and you'll be able to see that in the next step of the reaction, that is exactly what is formed. Okay? So, that is exactly what is formed. There's your next step of the reaction. So, you can, even if you don't know, uh, if you don't know how to go about looking at the question, it's a good idea to look at the product because you've given the product in this instance 
look at the product and see what bonds have been formed and which bonds have been broken. So if you go the other way, you can see that you've now got an OCH3 group there where there wasn't one in ethylene oxide before and you can also see that there is a negatively charged oxygen here so one of these bonds must have broken. Okay, So even if you work backwards you can still figure out where these uh, electrons are going and which bonds are being formed and which bonds are being broken. Okay, So that's the mechanism basically all you need to do for that. So where do you get your three marks? You get one mark for this arrow here, one mark for that arrow there, and one mark for correct dipoles. And it's as simple as that. So if you use your knowledge of mechanisms, you can try and predict a, you can predict any mechanism. Okay? You can see a reaction, you can predict the mechanism for no problem at all. So remember these rules, learn to apply them, Focus on the step-by-step -step process and you should be able to answer any of these organic mechanistic questions with ease. Thank you very much for listening and I hope this has been of use to you.